Today we are going to learn about backtraces, uh, well backtraces during runtime, and this is kind of um, related to yesterday's video which is about uh, setting a panic handler, and backtraces are a little bit similar because they have to do with, um, usually anyway, they have to do with um, panics, that's when you uh, usually see them, and um, so I'll just show you when you panic, there's always um, that message about uh, if you want to see a backtrace then you do this you run with uh, rest backtrace equals one and so what you can do is you can have it in your environment variables yourselves or you can just say uh, standard env uh, set var and then you go uh, rest backtrace and then you go one and then you panic again and then you can see your backtrace which is all the um, and it's actually a, sort of a small backtrace. They used to be like super, um, super detailed, and uh, they they changed it to um, this the smaller backtrace that just gives you the uh, the the most important information. So uh, you know you panicked here, and then um, and uh, I guess we didn't really do anything here, so not that interesting backtrace. But if you want to see the full backtrace, then you go full. And then let's run that again. Whoops, cargo run. And there you go, you get the full backtrace. So from where you start, so that everything on the stack. Um, do, 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 do. Finally, you get up to where does it go? Rust panic with hook. And then you can see uh, you know, the panic happened. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so that is a um, so the next question is you know what about uh, during runtime if you want to see what the backtrace looks like and it used to be a uh, there was a there's a crate there still is the crate it's called backtrace and uh, later on uh, we got uh, Rust backtraces in the standard library so instead of um, instead of using the, an external crate you can just um, you can do this so printing uh, backtrace. So this is before any panic happens. So we can take out the panic there. And what you do is you go standard, backtrace, backtrace, and then capture. However, this is going to be kind of interesting because uh, this will actually not show you anything. So it says uh, printing a backtrace, disabled backtrace. And the reason why is it, um, you can see right here, um, if uh, the Rust backtrace or Rustlib backtrace are are not set, so it's looking for when you go into capture, it checks to see if backtrace is, ena is enabled, and if you go into the uh, is enabled uh, method here, then you can see it's checking to see okay is there uh, is there Rustlib backtrace uh, is there Rust backtrace, so it's looking for these environment variables and seeing if they uh, and if they're there, seeing if they match zero or not. So that means that uh, you can either do this, what we did before, uh, standard env, set, uh, set var, and you go rest backtrace. And the funny thing is, um, so it checks to see if it's there. And usually you'll do this, uh, this one. And there you can see this is your, uh, your runtime backtrace before the, uh, before the panic even happened. And then, uh, but it's actually just checking to see if there's a, uh, if it's there and if it's a zero or not. So you can actually write uh, I'm backtrace or whatever you want, and it'll still print out. But you should probably just uh, type one because that's the, uh, that's the, usually what you use for the uh, enabled backtrace, especially uh, during panics. So put that back to one. Now let's say you don't uh, you don't want to do that. You can also do a force capture, not force capture, force capture, and then that will uh, that will capture it no matter what, independent of if you have that uh, environment variable there or not. And the reason why um, why it does that is because, or the reason why it uh, it doesn't capture by default and and checks the environment variable is because of this. Capturing a backtrace can be an expensive operation on some platforms, so uh, so yeah, it could uh, slow down your code in in some parts. So it doesn't want to assume that you want to um, 
pick up this uh, this back trace unless you've told it that uh, that you really want to uh, that you want to force capture it, or you have the uh, environment var variable there. And so, so that is the basics of uh, printing out a back trace. And I have a uh, small example here. There's also a uh, Let's see, where is it? Backtrace status. Because depending on your platform, it might not even be um, might not even be supported. So if you're using like, um, there you go, not implemented for the current platform, you're using, uh, I don't know, some, some super old computer or, or something like embedded uh, tiny device. And so it'll give you an unsupported, it's got this backtrace status uh, enum uh, disabled, and that's if, uh, if it's not set. And then captured is, of course, if uh, if we captured it. And so uh, I have a small example here. So let's bring in. I'm just going to copy this in. So it's an example that shows um, shows back traces uh, together with the uh, with a panic hook. So panic set hook, and you do. As you saw in the last video, if you haven't seen the last video, go to the, the one before and you can see uh, what this panic hook is about. So, let's see. So let's say we have just panicked and uh, we want to uh, get a backtrace and, and see what happened. So, print line, so we go panicked, uh, trying to capture a backtrace. Go match uh, backtrace uh, capture. Oops. Let backtrace. So this. Um, the uh, the struct so doing a capture will always give you this uh, this this backtrace um, struct so it's uh, it's not going to fail but uh, depending on uh, on the status it might be uh, you know unsupported disabled or captured but uh, but yeah it's not going to panic so don't worry about that inside uh, setting a panic hook so what you do is uh, match uh, backtrace status which is a method on the struct and it's going to be backtrace status. And it's got these three here. Backtrace status uh, captured, disabled, and uh, unsupported. And then if it's captured, then we're going to print it out. Got a backtrace. And then you can just uh, print it out here, backtrace. And uh, otherwise, maybe we don't want to bother printing it out. So we'll just say uh, backtrace disabled. Or we could print this out directly, and then uh, backtrace isn't supported like that. And oh yeah, that's the other interesting thing. So this is a uh, one of those non-exhaustive enums. So let's see. So if you go to backtrace status, you can see. It has this um, this uh, attribute non-exhaustive, which means that the uh, they might update the enum later. So maybe on top of unsupported, disabled, and captured, there will be uh, something else. And so they don't want to uh, guarantee that it's only going to be these three variants. So you could do uh, other and just say, uh, let's see, backtrace uh, enum got updated. And we'll just uh, print it out like that. Debug print that and shrink the size a little bit, and then let's see. And let's uh, let's run this. Yesterday this got cut off a little bit, so I'm going to make sure it doesn't happen again. Cargo run. You can see, let's see what happened. I think I forgot to panic. Um, 
panic. There we are. So we have the backtrace printing out after the panic happens inside the panic handler. So there we go. Panic's trying to capture a backtrace. And then it says uh, backtrace disabled because we didn't enable it. And then we can do standard uh, n set var rust backtrace. And we'll set it to 1. Like that. And then we'll panic again. And there you go. Uh, panic trying to capture backtrace. And we got a backtrace. And the other parts of the enum I can't do here because this is a uh, backtrace is nicely supported on my computer so and probably on your computer so anyway that is um that is how you print a uh, backtrace at runtime you can do it whenever you want but it could be could slow your code down by a little bit so uh watch out for that but otherwise it is uh pretty simple to do